Hi, welcome back to my series of screencasts on QGIS. Today I will be showing you quickly a new feature that's uh, made its way into version 1.7, which is soon to be released. Um, the feature allows you to do a simple routing calculation or network analysis um, to determine the shortest route between two places. Um, so in order to enable the, um, this new tool, you have to um, enable it in the plugin manager. I'm just going to type road and you'll see there's a new plugin available called the Roadcraft plugin. So I'm going to enable that. And then uh, when you enable it, you'll see a new panel appear on the uh, left of your screen. If this panel doesn't appear, you can also add it by going to view panels and just ticking the shortest path option here. You'll see that I've got a roads layer loaded in my project and I'm going to enable on the fly projection on my project as well and set the um, projection to the same as what my my data is in. Okay, so and I can see the scale is working properly and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to quickly configure the plugin um, to tell it um, something about my layer. So before I do that I'll quickly look at the layer itself and I just want to show you that um, you can see some of the attributes here. I've got the street name, and then I've also got direction, travel time, and average speed. Um, and these things are things that are, can be useful for us to um, to, con to when we configure the the road graph plugin. So what I'll do to configure the plugin is I will go to plugins, road graph, and I'll go to road graph settings. And here you can choose um, the units for time and distance. So um, in South Africa we use kilometers. Time distance will be hours. The topology tolerance can be used um, uh, if your um, the topology of your road data set is not 100%. Um, you can use this to uh, basically uh, tell the road graph plugin that um, if there is a gap between two lines, for example, to treat them as continuous uh, within a certain tolerance. So I'll set my tolerance to say 100, uh, say 10 meters or something like that. Um, and then uh, you choose the layer that you want to do your analysis on. I've only got one layer loaded, so it's defaulting to roads. And then you can choose a direction field. So we saw just now in my um, table I had a direction column. Uh, what I didn't show you was that the values in my direction column are um, uh, minus one, um, sorry, one, minus one, and zero for the different directions. So one meaning that this is a forward direction road, the other one meaning uh, it's a one way in the opposite direction and um, if it's a two-way street then it's got a zero value for direction. Okay and um, I can also choose a speed field so I've got um, an average speed okay and that's in kilometers per hour okay and um, you can also set some defaults for if um, you don't have those attributes, you can say that roads should always be considered to be two-way or one-way. Um, and you can also set a default speed. So um, I'm in an urban area, so I'll put, say, 60 kilometers an hour for the default speed. That will pick it up from my speed field. Okay, so now the plugin's configured. Um, one other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to check my... Um, in my options here and set my snapping tolerant and uh, just check that it's set. So I've got it set to vertex and segments and to 10 pixels. This will allow me to, um, um, when I choose the start and end points, to snap to the nearest road. Okay. So what I do now is I just use this little tool to click on the starting point. Say I would like to start over here. And then I use this tool over here to find the end point. Once it's completed calculating, you'll get a, a route marked out for you in, in red. Um, and it's an overlay on top of the existing data set. So there you can see where it would navigate you in order to drive the shortest route based on distance or time. Um, in this case, I've chosen uh, time, uh, uh, sorry, distance as my criterion. Once you've created your route, you can click on export 
and create a new layer in your project based on that root, which you can then treat as any normal um, layer. So um, you can edit it or combine it into a different data set and so on. Right, so I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration and I look forward to doing the next one for you soon.